3319, and uh, we have come out at executive session after multiple extensions. Uh, there's no decision to be made as a result of the executive session. And so we are now moving on to uh, presentation by Mike Sparber with regard to the booking center. And Amicio was coming back to this one too. But good. And we are just waiting for 10 minutes staff to be able to be here to do the presentation. So while we're waiting for staff is, uh, is, um, are there any other miscellaneous items or any else, anything else for the good of the cause? Mary. Um, so it came to my attention as we were having our two o'clock meeting, the treasurer is doing a loan to the ESD for school districts to PPE. Um, I will be talking to Michael Dunn at four o'clock when we're done to find out what that is. <laughs> so, because I thought we talked about that we were going to take care of the PPE for the school districts and we weren't, they don't need to take a loan out. Right. I have a call into the treasurer's office, Mary, before I, we did our two o'clock and left a message with the same question. I'm, I'm not sure why you're doing this and please give me a call and I haven't got one back yet. Okay, so I just want to make sure that I'm consistent when I talk to Michael Dunn that we are happy to help with PPE for the school districts. Well, Within Spokane County. Yes, in Spokane County. Yeah. Yes. And so the other issue that came up uh, during our lunch break was when we were talking about the universities and what we can do to help them, I, uh, I failed to mention um, for your consideration, uh, the two community colleges. Uh, should we also reach out to the two community colleges as well? And so uh, put that before you uh, so that we make sure that uh, we're being inclusive uh, as to who should be uh, part of that effort. Yes, and, and really we're really talking about masks. Mass cleaning solutions, you know, the, probably the same thing we did for the, okay. the small businesses is what I'm thinking. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll, I just we'll include. Be, thank you. I just wanted to be clear when I talked to Michael Dunn. So. Yeah. So we'll include the school district, or I mean the community colleges as well. All right. So. Mike. Barber. Can you give me one second? I, I sent a PowerPoint over, but I didn't show up. Yeah. Just scan that into the. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> Tony's trying to call in or going to call in, I think. Yeah. Yep. Tony I'm here. Email. Oh, hi, Tony. Hey, Tony. Thank you. Going to email Karen. Karen was going to email Karen. She's not in. She's gone for work. Yeah. Hey. And I guess I'm going to ask one more question on that, too. If, if the school district's checking and see what their purchasing power is, because I think they've got a co-op through the school districts. So I may have them work with Tony on the PPE to see who's got the better pricing. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah, we're very price conscious. So whoever's got the best yeah. deal. Okay. Are you ready, Mike? Uh, just one second. I want to get that diagram with yeah, the issues. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Well, I emailed it in advance. I don't know why she didn't get it. Yes. Do, you get, do you get the sense that we read out of patience? I think so. I don't want the 331 anymore, guys. Okay. You never, I want, just go you never want the late one. You want the first one. I want the first one. <laughs> this is what happens when we let him have a one day weekend. He is he goes lazy. Crazy. Yeah, he goes crazy. Yeah. Just, there we go. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, yeah. We'll try to serve. And thank you, Gil, for Here, saving all the parking spaces. So. Okay. All right. Let us get started here. So uh, just quickly, a, um, a reminder of what the purpose of the uh, intake facility and releasing center is. Um, is to reduce the potential of COVID exposure by serving as a booking releasing facility, handling the Spokane County Jail ORs, 
uh, offenders that would normally book, be booked into our jail. Maggie has identified that that number can range between 30 and 50 percent of our bookings. So we anticipate um, that as the courts loosen up and they start to have more of the hearings that they had previously, that our numbers will increase along with that as far as bookings. And uh, that traffic would otherwise be diverted over to the intake and releasing facility. It would handle all of the book and releases from the court by a court order. Uh, there, most of those folks come to the jail. They wait in our lobby. Uh, we take them into the booking area. We fingerprint them and uh, do the booking process and then release them immediately. That population would also be diverted to the intake and releasing facility. It also served for, as a location for the in-custody DNA and uh, serve as have a space available for someone to collect the out of custody DNA, which is associated with the sheriff's office, that, that would be their responsibility. We are just gonna provide a location for whoever the prospective person is for collecting that DNA to do so and then have somewhere logical to store it and then take part of our process uh, as we process it through the in custody uh, DNA. There's quite a backlog on it uh, and they're gonna have to start working on it. We also anticipate that that traffic would be uh, pretty high at the beginning of it until the backlog is caught up. But otherwise, we'll be diverting all of that traffic over to the intake and, uh, and the releasing center. The, sec the second function is also uh, phase two. Uh, if you look at the drawing, and I apologize for the small font, but I had to try to squeeze it all in there. Uh, on the building itself, uh, there you go, Gina. You can see the video courtroom in the left-hand corner there. Uh, that will serve as a, first, a location to do first appearances for everybody that's coming through the facility, the misdemeanors and some of the gross misdemeanors other than DUI and DVs. Um, there are some questions right now about how we're going to handle the, the, the probable cause sheets and forms. It's something that we need to continue to work on with the law enforcement and the courts. Uh, however, uh, once that's up and running, that would also serve as, a, you know, to cut down on some of the COVID exposure to the courts. They would other, otherwise have to go over there for their first appearances. We also anticipate that as a consequence of doing this, that we're gonna reduce the number of FTAs that we have by giving them a meaningful court appearance um, as they pass through the intake and uh, release facility. So that's kind of uh, the uh, foundation for why we're doing it. It's all uh, meant to, you know, save off some of that traffic that would otherwise be coming into the main jail and uh, the potential for the COVID exposure to, you know, increase with the numbers. So, Mark, sir, I understand that this is a tight budget, but are we really going to have open air water closets? Is that what you're, that <laughs> what you're sure. proposing? Well, that's what I was. So I had to pick and choose, at, <laughs> sir. <laughs> In my drawing, I had to pick and choose from physio. What me, I thought could work as good ones. Me, right? I don't want anybody to loiter. You know, uh, humility goes out the door. You know, and, uh, so, it's, your call, it's your call, Al. You want doors to the building or doors to the stall? <laughs> uh, there's only enough I money for stop. one. <laughs> So uh, if you look at the facility, there was uh, some conversation over impacting the DEM parking, which is where the, where that box is. Um, the hand is right there is DEM. If you go up a little bit, you know, so they can see it'll reduce it a little bit more. D up the other way. I'm sorry, not down. Up, down, a little bit more. Sorry, <laughs> right there. Up. All right, there's DEM. <laughs> we found it. Uh, so DEM. Uh, Ozzy had, uh, had some concerns, there you go, that's perfect, had some concerns about us utilizing that parking area over there uh, because he would need those parking spaces in the event of uh, some type of emergency, uh, emergency management uh, crisis. And then he also expressed that uh, some of his under, undercover uh, cars are parked in that, that area as well. Um, and to the left, over there by the facilities, which is the far box to the left. Yeah, keep going over, Ron. Uh, in this area right here by some facilities, those have been allocated to the Spokane uh, PD as parking spaces along that row right there of the, the, the checkered line right there, Ron, on the left-hand so, side. Bruce, 
on this drawing that he has south is to the north, south is the top of the page. No, that's north. 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 That is north. Yes. Okay. Yes, All the utilities are right in the street. I hope right. I hadn't goofed it up that bad. Uh, I'm just, just trying wondering. to orient myself here. <laughs> At least you didn't put the toilets so, out of the street. I know where the restroom is. <laughs> <laughs> you know where the bathroom is. Hey, go ahead and save some money. <laughs> <So, laughs> Uh, <laughs> that, that street right there is Gardner Street. Okay, thanks. Okay. Uh, just so everyone. <laughs> you know what, Bruce? You're handling all the drawings from here on out. I'm your day job, Sparber. Dang it. <laughs> I ain't doing them anymore. So, so Gardner Street is what you see at, uh, at the north of the map right there. Uh, there is designated parking for law enforcement, a log map. Uh, that's why I have the parking signs there. Where we anticipated the law enforcement would pull up to the center park along there. Um, there's two doors facing the north. One is uh, the entrance and the other one is the exit. Uh, they would come in through the entrance and then uh, undergo the booking procedures. If uh, we had, they became problematic once they got in. Uh, into that, they would go into that holding area as you see towards the north of the, the building right there. Otherwise, if they're going along and they're complying with everything that we would, they would follow the same concept as an open booking, which they would just have a seat in those, in those benches out there in the open area and wait for their time and their process to go through. Maggie would also uh, would take care of the pretrial services and some of the other services that she's going to um, work with the offenders on prior to their release. And then they would use that exit way right there to exit out of the building. If you look to um, the left, you'll see that it has a property storage up there. That's for all the oversized uh, property that can't come into the facility, like backpacks or bikes or any of those type of things. They would go into that Connex box. Uh, they would be tagged through our jail tracker system. Once uh, the offender was released, they would just simply go out there and then we would uh, release the property to them. The, the south end of it, you'll see another doorway. That's what we anticipate would be our, our main, um, pathway to the jail. If we had to book them into jail, uh, it would be enclosed. And we we're still discussing some of the points of that, whether it be Gil and I, whether it be more wide open, you know, and, and something with a roof over it versus, you know, a narrow chain link fence or something or like a gauntlet and you would have to walk down and uh, to the other end. But those would be for the people that do not comply or that we discover something in there uh, while booking him that would prohibit them from being booked in and out and we would escort them down and hand them off uh, to jail staff to be booked into the main jail. So where this sits right now, there is a, there is a sidewalk that runs, runs along north and south, the DEM building. This would essentially sit in the middle of that uh, uh, sidewalk. And then we would utilize the sidewalk uh, to the south end, as I said, for, uh, to make our way down to the jail. Right now, as far as next steps, uh, we're completing some of the uh, conversations about the PC as I talked about for the video courtroom. Those are gonna continue, and I know Maggie is on vacation this week. We're gonna try to continue to schedule those as often as we can to see how much progress we can make on the video courtroom before it opens, and those will continue. Um, I met with uh, Jim Amacio and with Tony Hall today to discuss what it would look like to procure the building. Tony Hall, you're on here. Can you give an update on that? Yep, so for this, uh, we could either use the existing um, COVID declaration that we have uh, to buy this, or uh, we're working on trying to find a state or national contract that we can use um, to accelerate this bid time a little bit. Okay, and then uh, Jim is also, Jim Amesos in the room. Chris is here too. Hey, Chris, I didn't see Chris back. Okay, Chris, if you could talk about the emergency um, Mike, I think there's two things for the board to recall here. Firstly, uh, as Mike indicated, board members, there's the funding issue, and we've talked to Carrie Gridall, and Carrie's view is that this is CARES eligible. And the reason it's CARES eligible is because this intake facility will allow us to meet the social distancing requires for our requirements for our staff and for individuals who will be taken to the intake facility. And we expect uh, there to be more in the near future because the courts are gearing up and we expect the prosecutor may very well be initiating certain charging language. So I think Carrie and, and uh, legal staff are looking at Chris, we feel comfortable 
that this is, co uh, this is CARES eligible. The second issue is we want it up and going as soon as possible because as we know, you like to spend the CARES money within by December 31st, or at least a purchase this and pay for it within a reasonable time afterwards. So we've been talking with uh, Tony Hall, and there's two ways that we can move forward to expedite this particular project. One, as Tony has mentioned, we rely upon a contract where someone else has purchased a facility very similar to what we're looking for. That's option one. We do it all the time in a local cooperation agreements or whatever with a federal or state agency or another county. Uh, Tony's exploring that, if you will. The second option that Mike alluded to is there's two statutes under which if there's an emergency brought about as a result of COVID and it requires immediate action that you can waive the bidding requirements for public works and purchases of supplies, equipment, and material. And so we're hoping that Tony can find this uh, particular project an agreement that someone already has in place so we can buy it right away. If not, we, we believe that there's sufficient facts to bring it under one of the uh, uh, RCWs that allows us to waive the bidding requirements for public works, if you will, and, and or the purchase of supplies, equipment, and materials. And if we have to use that option, I think a staff has recommended that we come back to the board to be sure we share with you those facts in more detail and that you have a comfort level with those because if we opt to go that route, it's certainly the board's decision based upon a recommendation from staff. What about permitting? I'm sorry, Jerry. What about permitting? Can let Bruce talk about permitting? Yeah. Permitting? Yeah. What Under you... the emergency statute, do we have any flexibility of getting it permitted because it still sits in the city. We still have to go through the permitting process with the city, but we can not have to go through the public works and things of that nature. Or if we had to hire an architect for this, uh, if this is an emergency, we can hire an architect if we can't take it off our small works roster. Well, yeah. in, in addition to that, it would, it would be we need to find out whether the emergency declaration can allow us to buy that because realistically we've got four months and and if we have to hire a design team to come in and do it and then do the even just to do the drawings and stuff we aren't going to hit the time Sorry, first. No way, so yeah. uh, I know it sounds like the city was able to bypass the permitting thing for the the homeless the temporary homeless shelter up here so if, if we can get uh, a bypass on this as well that you know I mean our, our intent is to go with whoever the manufacturer of this unit is and have them be able to contract to do all of the work if we can if not I mean if not all of it at least most of it yeah so <clears throat> I mean that that really is the question though is whether or not we can get a permit and whether we can bypass that process so the, the, the big thing for these is the utilities. So you've got access to sewer and water. Mm -hmm. You don't have to sprinkle it. So all you're going to do is bring a domestic water line in yep. and four inch waste and you're done. Yeah, power, water, and sewer is all right there on the north end of the building. Okay. Great. Had a lot to do with it being the preferred site. Yes. You didn't have to trench anywhere. You weren't doing <laughs> you have a lot to do. Yeah, you didn't have to <laughs> trench your way out of there. Right. <laughs> okay. So. That is where I'm at right now and next steps. We really need to have some of these addressed right away if we're gonna start making some progress on this. Yeah, I'll be done with uh, uh, Mike and his crew has been really good about getting me the information I need to get a drawing ready and I'll have that ready this week. That has stalls and everything? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. With doors. With doors. Yeah. With doors. So I'll have that ready this week so that oh, I can work with, with purchasing to get that out to, how, to whoever it is that they need or the, whoever they find to, that can give us some pricing on this. So um, the big the big holdup right now would just be the permitting process. So, so we could be in a permit. We could be in a position to go ahead and approve contracts by next Tuesday. Then, well, depending on who's available mm -hmm. through Tony's or through purchasing okay. uh, yeah. program. Yeah. Okay. Be nice to be able to tie this up in mental health at the same time and yep. mm. get both those projects going. Yep. Okay. Any questions, Mary or Josh? 
Okay. Nope. okay. Good job, team. Looks like we're good. Yeah. That way, and don't give up your day job, Mike. I'm not. I'm no <laughs> architect. And full disclaimer. Better while I'll set you out a room in your hand, right? Yeah. <laughs> And, you know, <laughs> the line does look pretty straight, though. <laughs> I was going to say, there's the toilet. <laughs> Drop the pen and walk away. Okay. So uh, that completes all of the items. Oh, we got one more. We have one. We have one. Right? You had to ask about e-signatures, you know, earlier. Hey, hey, you're going to you you throw me a, a stoner got... or something, buddy. Come on. Tick tock, tick tock. Gary's got to go. It's perfect. Yeah, that's not mine. Okay. Right. Thank you. Good. That's good. Well, we gotta keep All right, everyone. Yeah. I'm dropping off. Yeah. Should, should look like that. Yeah. Jump. Okay. Okay. Well, that's a little hard to read, but it's Oh, hey. Here we go. That's what you're here for. All right. Look at you. You guys got it. Does everybody have that? Yes, we got pretty pictures. We got it up on the board. It seems really counterintuitive to be offering up a hard copy of my presentation when I'm <laughs> going to be telling you about how we're trying to go electronic. <laughs> Transition. Yeah. Okay to no, start? Don't start. Go. Okay. Yeah, we've got uh, a hard deadline. Mary's got to be out of here, so. Okay. Uh, quickly, e-signature was what I was told to present, but it's a little hard to disconnect e-signature and what we're doing there with what we're doing on the document management side, which is the Docfinity system that we came to you guys for approval to purchase uh, last December. And we've actually contracted with an entity called Docfinity um, and they provide a really robust tool that we're hoping to grow across the county and to be kind of the central repository for all documentation. Now as a bolt on to that, We've also purchased what's called DocuSign. You guys have probably heard of that, right? If you've signed a mortgage or something, you're, you've gone through the experience where you pull up the document and it's got a DocuSign wrapper around it and it says, please click here. And when you do that, it throws a little image of your signature on there. And there might be two or three different places you do that. You might have to do an initial, but it's all done electronically. You hit send. Well, behind the scenes, there's an administrator on that that says, I've got a new contract, let's say and I want uh, two or three people to sign it at the bottom, and they simply go and grab those email addresses and they place them over the top of the signature, hit submit, and then it goes out to the three entities, and you can indicate if you want it to go out in a certain order or not. Well, it just so happens that we're using that now. We've got a few administrators around the county. We kind of put a toe in the water. As we're rolling out Docfinity, we're also rolling out DocuSign. So, I won't get into Docfinity too much, the DMS system guys, but if you have questions, I, I welcome them. But on the DocuSign side, the assessor is using DocuSign with contracts uh, they put together with title companies that access Eagle Web for recorded documents. Uh, HR is currently using it for MOUs with the union. Uh, IT has tried it out a few times on contracts, works great. Uh, environmental Services recently reached out to us with a problem because of the pandemic, they require a, a signature at the end of the permitting process for a sewer system. It's been a real challenge for customers to, to do that and fax it in, walk in, how do I get it into the building, it's locked. So we actually set up uh, with Mark Stilts uh, a capability so that they can issue electronic signatures with those customers and we're seeing those numbers really pop up. So they're using it a lot and they've got dozens of other sewer type kind of efforts where they could roll this out as well. So again, a toe in the water for them, but they love it and we're going to grow it. Um, and recently we talked to Carrie over in Grants, Carrie Gittel, and she seems really enthusiastic about using it with her contracts. You guys see a lot of Grants contracts. Almost every day. Yeah, almost every day. And you know, the, the hassle of having somebody physically walk a document around the county to get signatures only to find that somebody isn't sitting at their desk and I'll come back two hours later and it might take days. It's, it's really cleaned things up. So with DocuSign, we purchased what are called envelopes, about 1,500 of them. They cost five bucks a piece and uh, an envelope constitutes a signing event. So if I've got three commissioners signing on one document, that's one envelope. So we, we bought a few, we know we're going to be buying more and over the years, as we expand this out to other departments, we'll, we'll be buying a lot more, but uh, you can already see that $5 for an electronic signature event 
is a lot cheaper than somebody walking around the campus and, and doing that. So, especially in the time of the pandemic when we don't want bodies moving around between buildings. So, Docfinity wise, just be aware. I think John and I talked kind of e everything we've been talking about lately. We would like to come back to you with an update on the Docfinity DMS system rollout in November. Um, but at a high level, I'll give you a taste and obviously ask questions. We're currently rolling out uh, two or three pilot departments right now. Um, we'll have stood up HR and purchasing by the end of the month. They're actually going into training this week and they're gonna do a little quick testing. But HR has a whole room full of personnel files, current employees, past employees, and this goes all the way back to the retention project, Al, you'll remember that. Um, we know we've got all kinds of closets and back rooms stuffed with papers. This Docfinity system is gonna allow us to make all of that electronic and chuck all that stuff in and be able to pass that around, make it easily accessible. You'll very easily be able to search for this stuff, look it up. You'll be able to workflow documents amongst your counterparts. If you've got an existing workflow that exists where you're physically passing papers, let's say a resolution that needs signatures, we can easily set that up so that it bounces from each commissioner back to Gina. Gina attaches a resolution number. She can put an electronic stamp on the document, the big seal, the county seal, and then you can file that away in this system as the master repository, and then make it available to individuals via the website uh, Docfinity has a portal capability. So we can set up a secure portal or a wide open portal, and it does nothing but allow the public to dip into the system and go get these things. So it's really exciting. Uh, again, it's Docfinity, the document management system, and the DocuSign system are very much interrelated. They're bolted together, but as we go to different departments and look to, to kind of roll this out, we're just trying to identify their needs. Again, some departments, it's simply, I've got a back room full of paper I've got to solve for. And some of them have a workflow where they have to be able to pass documents. So there's lots of different uh, solutions that we can roll out with this thing, but I'll open it up to you guys. Questions, comments? What is the, what's the application to this with the courts? You know, Tim and the courts just generate an enormous amount. Well, so does Correct. detention services. Yeah. So is this, is there a utility to them for this system? So I'm working with Tim on the e-file solution and we're gonna go out and investigate existing e-file products on the market, you know, purpose-built e-file systems. I think knowing what I know about this system, it's in the running. It's gonna be a top contender. I don't know, it's not purpose-built for that, but we can configure it for that. So I'm going to be looking at that very closely, knowing what I know about Docfinity. But uh, it definitely on the court side, we, there's kind of a split in the county where we use a, an existing document management system called AX on the justice side and all the other sides kind of use a mishmash of homegrown stuff that we've built and some off-the-shelf stuff we wanted to consolidate that mishmash into one system that everybody uses a lot cheaper and easier to manage right and then as we get good at it and we show everybody how terrific this thing is we go over to justice and we say it's time for you guys to think about moving over well that's happening already I've got people knocking on my door saying we've got issues with documentation retention you know, searchability, what can you do for us? So we're starting to open the door to the justice side, Jerry. And, and yeah, I'm very familiar with Kim's predicament up there, and I think we're gonna be able to make things happen for him rather. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Okay, any questions? So Ken, conceivably, when might our commissioners during a Tuesday 2 p.m. consent agenda have not a piece of paper in front of them? You could, you could use civic clerk to put the agenda and the packet together. You could vote on a civic clerk software on a, on a little tablet, each commissioner. Mm -hmm. It could go to Gina. Gina could compile, dump it to Docfinity. Docfinity could do all the storage, the retention, adding of e-signatures, and out to the public for posting when it's all done. When? Next year? <laughs> four? I'm going to sandbag and say <laughs> end of 2022. No, I, I don't know. It just depends on resource availability. But if you guys want us to put the focus there. I didn't say that. I, I was just wondering. Yeah. yeah. So we'll the board. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know. I For some reason, thought I recall there was some sort of program where they did not really match each other. We can make them talk, okay. but it would be an interface that would have to be built to get the two to talk. Yeah, but that's very doable. Yeah. 
Okay. Any other questions for Ken? Uh, is is this where where I submit my complaint that I still don't get the Civic Plus emails? <laughs> oh, I love that. So look into that. I think you might Thank have you. to go into it with your computer and work with care of it. Yeah. We already tried everything. Okay. I will talk to. They're starting Kevin to Morris. uncover the oh, conspiracy, yes, yes, God. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you follow the thread. That's right. Follow the money. Follow the money. <laughs> we will figure it out. <laughs> Somebody's behind this. <laughs> I know. I noticed that Maceo left the room pretty quickly <laughs> after the last uh, topic. So. You know, he recently rented an apartment in Deer Park. <laughs> 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 okay, so well, more questions on this. Uh, last call for any miscellaneous Thanks. items. Seeing none. Gimmel. I would rather chop my arm off than raise it right now. <laughs> <laughs> just know or maybe that, I'll just chew it off. <laughs> just know that if you wouldn't, we would. All right, so. Gina? It is Gina. Gina. So ten o'clock tomorrow, we have it on the weekly agenda. Are we canceling or? But the we have scheduled. it on the placeholder. Oh, no, we have nothing scheduled for ten o'clock tomorrow, so uh, we have to cancel by resolution. Uh, no. So we can just cancel it. I think. Do either one of you have a burning desire to meet at ten o'clock tomorrow morning. Seeing no one, so I'm going to go ahead and cancel the uh, CEO briefing for tomorrow. Are either one of you participating with the health district uh, briefing at eight o'clock? I'll be on the call. I'll zoom in, and then I have my Hutton board meeting. Okay, so I will be there. Uh, so we'll do that, and then uh, we will not meet again until two o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. Okay, so. What's this? Uh, are we gonna talk about this or are you good? Oh, well. Oh, oh, oh well. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we have a miscellaneous. <laughs> or did you just send this to them? No, I was so. Okay, so can you send this to them? Yes. And then we can take action on it tomorrow and still get it out. So, so the, the, the GSI, is going to be notifying the recipients of the grant money for the business and the nonprofits. And so there's a cover letter that's going to go out under um, our logo and GSI's logo. And it'll be signed by myself and um, uh, Alicia Benson. Uh, but uh, so Jared is going to send it to you. Have you take a look at it, see if you have any edits before tomorrow. The reason why this is important is because the checks, as, as of today, as I found out, evidently are going to go out on ANOVIA checks. And so people were receiving grant money on ANOVIA checks and have no idea that that grant money came from the county. So this letter is a cover letter that says that grant money came from the county and uh, was administered through GSI who then subcontracted to Novia. I just wanted to make sure that the county was recognized for the work that you did and providing that money to the business and nonprofits in the community. So take a look at this, edit it, whatever, get your comments back to Jared, and then we can take an action to approve it tomorrow. Is that all right? Sounds good. Okay. Anything else? I gotta get off. What's that? I said I'm off. See you yeah, guys. Yeah, we're, we're gone. We're adjourned. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. See you soon. So long. How do you? So, former Commissioner O'Quinn is now in the check writing business.